Good morning, welcome to Granger Amplification. This is Kurt Granger. Today we're modifying a pristine Marshall JCM 800 Master Model 50 Watt Mark II lead. This amp's in great shape. It's uh, been kept in a flight case by the owner its entire life and uh, it's in really good shape. Anyway, uh, like most amps of this nature, this one uh, has one pre-phase inverter master volume uh, that has to be cranked up pretty good for the full tone to come through the amp and it gets really loud so he opted to have a uh, post-phase inverter master volume, the Type 2 or the Larmar master volume. We're going to install that today right here in this second speaker jack that's marked with an X. We're not going to drill any holes in this pristine chassis. We're not going to mar any surfaces. We're just going to use what most people consider an unused speaker jack. All right. First step is uh, our 250K audio taper dual ganged pot. This is an alpha pot, and I am prepping it for the installation. You'll notice the 2.2 meg half watt carbon film resistors. And what I like to do is bend these tabs up just a little bit carefully you don't want to weaken the metal uh, and go ahead and insert this and uh, this uh, lug with the wire jumper the resistor lead going across is going to be our also our connection point for our negative uh, bias voltage connection so all right we've got our pot installed I haven't tightened the external nut all the way yet because I may need to rotate rotate this just a little bit to, to work with it. Uh, I'll fasten it when I'm done. Also you'll notice that I just clipped the other jack and the wire leads going from that jack to this jack to this DI jack out but I've replaced the wire lead here that was run across here with a dedicated uh, wire so this jack can still be used. My next step is uh, going to be removing the circuit board. We're going to do this installation properly. We're not going to attack solder on the components on the component side. That's the quick but inefficient, which leads to a future trouble method. We're going to do it the right way. We're going to take this board out. and uh, You'll notice I've already taken the plastic nuts and the front knobs off. And uh, you got to be really careful with these these pots if you pull too hard. So I use this little tool here, which helps me gently pry off these knobs. Next, we're gonna remove the uh, securing nuts for each pot, and uh, you want to make note that you use the proper wrench and use the closed end. You don't use this end because you slip. You can mar these face plates. This is a 12 millimeter wrench for these pots. Okay, correction. This one right here seemed to be a 12 millimeter, but in fact, these are one half inch nuts. So we're going to use the half inch wrench. Just make sure you got the right size wrench before you start pulling on these. Okay, we've got all the nuts out of the front panel and this circuit board slides right out. careful with these pots these are mounted directly on the board you want to make sure you don't bend any in the process of removing that panel all right I've unsoldered the two grid wire leads the green and the orange from the bottom side of the board I uh, removed the solder from the pad using a uh, moderate volt, uh, moderate temperature on my soldering iron since this is a one-sided board. Got to be really careful with these solder pads. Now, one other interesting tidbit to mention is this resistor here has been put in here. This is not original. This amp was originally uh, equipped with 6550s, and it was uh, later 
uh, changed over to run EL34s. And we've got our existing bias splitter resistors removed. These were the original 150K, which is what's installed when you're uh, running 6550s. And uh, even though the EL34s usually have 220K, uh, it's perfectly fine to run the EL34s with the 150s, so they were left in there. But we've got them out, and now we're going to start wiring our master volume. One more interesting observation. If you look at the, uh, the grid leads to the power tube sockets, there are no grid resistors. So we're going to put some 5.6K grid resistors in there, in there as well, and that's, that'll prevent uh, any future parasitic oscillation issues. All right, I'm preparing my wire leads, and I use the Belden cable. This has got a shield and two conductors, black and red. This is perfect for a master volume because, or a post-phase inverter master volume. Uh, you can use the shield and connect it to the negative bias supply, kill two birds with one stone. You've got your negative bias supply at your pot, and you've got shielding for your signal leads. Uh, so you'll notice on this end, I've got the wires pulled like this because my black lead is going to go to the back side of this pot, and my red lead's going to the front side. And this wiper, middle lugs, are going to connect to the grids of the power tubes which you can see I've already got the uh, new grid stop resistors in there. Alright, one very important thing to note before I, while I'm dressing this, you can see I've added heat shrink on the shield. It's hard to see there, you can see it now. I've got some clear insulation because you do not want your negative bias or shield to contact at any time this pot casing. That pot casing is connected to chassis, which is ground. Uh, you'll ground out your bias supply. you have all kind of nasty problems when you fire up the amp. So you want to make sure your shielded lead is uh, adequately isolated from any ground pot casing, etc. All right. I have my wire lead prepped, heat shrink on. Both sides. I haven't stripped that side yet because I want to measure that to where I need it before I cut and strip it. Okay, I've got my grid wire leads connected. And you can see I've trimmed the resistor leads and the wire leads from the wipers in the middle. But I have yet to uh, trim these, mainly because I've got one more shield connection to make on that outer lug. Uh, you'll notice that I have tinned or soldered the end of that stranded wire. Uh, putting a little solder on the end, tinning that will keep that from uh, keep the strands from separating as you're uh, working with the wire and feeding it through the solder lugs. Alright, here's my second prepared wire lead. This is going to carry my signal from the phase inverter output to the pot here and uh, preparing these wire leads is probably the most lengthy time consuming part but you want to make sure you get these right and uh, on that note a lot of a lot of people when they install these especially if they put the pot right, pot right here on the back panel uh, they don't even use shielded wire and I've done that before too but uh, taking this extra step and using the shielding wire you can essentially install these master volumes anywhere in the amp. I install them all the time on the front panel. And with this shielding method, you're, uh, it's always going to be noise free. I have yet to find one that uh, had any extra noise because of uh, the placement when using shielded wiring. All right, you can see where I've attached the uh, shielded wire leads to the bias supply where the uh, bias splitter resistors were previously and the signal leads and uh, you're probably wondering uh, since all the other wire leads are soldered from the top side to the bottom why I did it the opposite way 
Well, for one reason. If somebody just decides to revert this back to a non master volume amp, uh, they're going to need to remove this PCB printed circuit board to do it correctly. And uh, it pretty much ensures that uh, to remove that master volume wire lead, they're going to have to remove this board and do it the right way. So that's why I did it that way. All right, I'm about to put the uh, or secure the board. And uh, one little note I'd like to mention is when I remove hardware, I have this handy little uh, blue mat, non-conductive, uh, heat resistance. Heat resistant won't won't melt when you hit a hit a soldering iron to it accidentally. But anyway, I leave these parts laid out exactly the way they came out. So when I go to reassemble, there's no question as to where everything goes. Makes it makes my life uh, a lot easier. When it's time to reassemble. All right, back to the pot. There's one lead. There's the second lead. There's a little tin on that shielded wire lead to make it go through the lug a little easier. All right. Yeah, and there's that third lead. Those shields are soldered in there now. Before I secure this pot to the chassis, it's still a little loose, see? I want to show you something. See how close that shield is, that pot casing? That's why we insulate those. Because if that moves around or gets turned or, or comes loose and that shield moves towards the casing, it won't ground out and you won't lose your bias supply and blow the tubes up. That's why we find it's important to insulate those. All right, we trimmed all our leads. The pot is dressed for dinner. All right. All right, all we have left to do is connect our grid leads. And the reason I don't, I leave these a little long is because uh, when you go to connect them, you got a 50-50 chance of getting it right. If you follow the initial wire leads back to the grids, you're going to be okay. But sometimes things get twisted around accidentally. And uh, you turn the amp on, you get a loud howl once you turn the volume up. You got some positive feedback going. You just reverse these leads. That's why I don't trim them yet. I'll make sure I got them connected right. And then I can unsolder them, trim them up to length, and solder them back. Okay, I've got my grid leads connected. It's time to uh, power this thing up. And I'm going to do it on a bulb limiter just to make sure there's no abnormal connections. Oh, that's a good sign. And stand by. Speaker load. Always connect. And there we go. Should be good. All right, we're on the metered outlet. That's our idle current draw. We're looking good here. We're just on the mains. We haven't hit the standby yet. And now we're in play mode. We're off the standby. The amp is ready to test. I also want to make mention that I did test a negative bias voltage before I hit the standby switch. Always want to make sure you've got negative bias voltage on those grids so you don't run a pair of tubes. And looks like we're about negative 37 on those EL34s. We should be good. I'll check the bias after I test the uh, master volume just to see where the bias is. All right. No positive feedback. We got our grid leads right. This, uh, adding this post phase master volume to a Marshall amp that already has a pre phase inverter master volume, as you can turn this post all the way up and use 
the front panel master volume pre-phase inverter to the act looks like a stock amp. See how loud it gets? That's just on one. Of the amp, I checked the bias, they're sitting right at 38 milliamps. We'll put the rest of the hardware back on and button it up. All right, we are done. I'm just going to dust off this front panel. Looking nice, looking nice. Just want to say uh, thanks for checking out this video. Be sure to like it if you like it. Be sure to leave comments and subscribe to my channel i appreciate all of you and hope you all have a wonderful day